Drive Guys, live and local. Every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Thank you to Jerry Reynolds for joining us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, it's Whitey and Drapes. Did you hear what Matt Barnes said on Eric Armstead's podcast? No, I missed it. What did he say? Very surprised. Let's find out. He he joins us now. What was he, a 14-year NBA veteran, all the Smoke Pod co-host, um, seen, of course, uh, doing Kings games. Matt Barnes back with us. How are you today, Matt? What's up, fellas? Hey, Matt, I got, what's up, baby? I, I got to ask Drake, you. what's happening? <laughs> first things first here. Uh, you said something really interesting with Eric Armstead. He asked you about, uh, you said a lot of interesting things, but he asked you about underrated teammates, and you went Rudy Gay. That was really an interesting answer. Tell us why you chose Rudy Gay as an underrated teammate. Um, Just talent-wise. I felt like him and Jeff Green were probably two of the most talented, skilled, uh, really no flaws in their game, no holes in their game when they're at their peak. And... You know, for, for for some reason or another, it was just never really awarded. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe uh-huh. consist due to consistency or whatever it may be, but just very skilled guys that that, that that could really do anything out there on the court at any given time. And I think sometimes maybe both of those guys got knocked because they were nice guys, maybe not mean enough, dirty enough. But uh, two guys that were very skilled um, that I played with throughout my career. Awesome. Yeah, Thank our you. guy Matt Barnes joining us, and and, and, and Matt, I, I saw some of the clips you guys had with Alonzo Mourning, man, uh, tremendous job <laughs> with that. I, I love Zo, and, and, and I like the fact that you know you guys talked about Sean Kemp as well. Yeah. You know the Rain Man, and, and when I look at Sean Kemp, as great as he was, I there's never been another one like him. Like we got all the athleticism in the world now. But nobody really moves like Sean Kemp did back in the day. Just speak to that, man, and, and how great the Rain Man was. He was one of my favorite well, I mean, players. Yeah, Sean Kemp was 6'10", and it's always it, – it's not necessarily awkward, but it doesn't look as cool for 6'10 guys to do stuff in the air like it does for a 6'6 or a 6'4 mm-hmm. guy. But somehow Sean made it look uh, cool, and he was up in the air and, and, and dunking on people, and, and Zoe made a great – comparison you know he, he called him a 610 Vince Carter so if you kind of <laughs> apply that logic it's just uh incredible but yeah definitely an underrated you know a very underrated uh talent at, at a time where obviously social media didn't exist I think if you know him and GP were doing their act you yeah. know when social media was exi- you know was existing it would, it would be a whole different you know outcome for them post-career and probably during career too so very talented guy. We're actually in the works right now, trying to get him out to LA next week to uh, sit down and, and have an interview with him on all the smoke. So, hoping to keep our fingers crossed for that. Yeah, you know when when uh, Zion was first coming into public consciousness, and we all watched him and tried to figure out is he like anybody? It, I know it's a really imperfect comparison, but Sean Kemp was the only one that I could think. Well, I see a little of that. That was the only only comp I could make to Zion. At Zion, Duke. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just the strength of dunking, purely. Just, yeah. just just purely the strength and the veracity of which they dunk with and attack the the basket with. But again, what what is that on six six? Yeah. Six seven. Right, you know, right, so imagine, yeah. you know, a six ten, six eleven guy with that same fiery and, and, and athleticism. So yeah, Sean Kim was definitely special, man. So uh, hoping to uh, sit down with him and just check in on how life is going. Yeah. Hey Matt, as far as the Kings, I mean obviously we talked about it when you were on with us this year. We all know it. Defense improved this year. Why do you think the offense seemed to, compared to a year ago, why did the offense seem to collapse this year at times? Uh, I mean, I think they took the league by surprise last year. Uh, the, the, the last uh, Not last season, but the season before. Yeah. When they, mm-hmm. you know, the offensive efficiency was off the chart, and you know they took teams by surprise because it was a younger version, if we're being honest, of what Golden State had been doing for a long time. And it was kind of a new twist with new characters and, and guys in new roles. And, you know, those guys went out there and, and executed it and, you know, made a, you know, a nice little run to the first round of the playoffs. Um, but this year, you know, just like any good quarterback who has the first year, they want to see, is, you know, is this guy serious? Was that, you know, was that because we didn't scout him as hard? Or, but I felt coming into this last season that just finished that the Kings had a lot to prove because I think a lot of people wanted to know was the year before a fluke. And I think obviously inconsistencies throughout the season through certain players and, and injuries like everyone has, uh, they just weren't able to kind of capture what they had the season before. So it, it, it's going to be an interesting off season. You know, since I've kind of stepped away from the team, I'm not really sure who's up on deals and who's a free agent and, and who has years left, but definitely uh, some moves need to be made if this team wants to, you know, get back to where they were two years ago. Matt, I was going to ask you that, that exact question. Can, can Monty and the Kings afford to be patient 
uh, in this lands- current landscape of the West? <laughs> like, we, we got to do something, big fella. <laughs> Well, it's tough. You know, I mean, I think I, obviously we, we wanted to praise Monty and, and, and ownership and management for what they did and being able to put this team together. And you never want to make drastic, a ton of drastic moves. I think, you know, piece by piece is, is, is the best way to go. But, you know, these Kings fans hadn't seen playoff basketball in 16 years. So now that they got a taste of it, I know they're starving uh, for some more. So, so, you know, some people are going to be impatient, but if I'm, if I'm front office there, I'm making strategic moves. I'm not making a ton of moves. I still think I have a very solid core in, in, in De'Aaron Fox and, um, Sabonis and, and, and Keegan Murray. And then, you know, the pieces around him, if I'm not mistaken, I think Malik Monk is up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he was very instrumental, uh, for this team and it's hard to get players like him to come out to Sacramento, but you know, he's got a taste of Sacramento, know what it's like. So hopefully they'll be able to give him what he needs to stay put. And then, you know, Harrison Barnes, he's someone who, you know, Drake, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Harrison, but yeah. sometimes I feel like he's very comfortable blending in instead of standing out because he has standout talent. So there are a few guys that I would, you know, definitely hear offers for and, and, and kind of test the water, so to speak with some of those current guys. But you know, I, I think it's no secret they need to make a move. They have to kind of decide what they're going to do with Kevin Herter. It was a very up and down and inconsistent year, and he took a lot of heat and played well and got hurt and then played well and got hurt. So really kind of interested to see what they do with him. So they definitely have some pieces that, uh, you know, that, that, that you can dangle out there and see what it, you know, see what will happen with it. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be an interesting summer for Monty and, and management to see what kind of moves they can make because if we recall last year, they didn't make too many. You know, they were very comfortable with what they had accomplished the year before and thought that this year would be a year of growth. And, you know, they kind of took a little bit of a step back. So it's going to be an interesting off season for Monty because, again, you got a lot of praise and well, well-deserved well praise, you know, two years ago. But th- I think this is a bigger summer coming into it because two years ago they got a taste. This year they didn't make it. So they're, they're, they're going to be starving next year. Catching up with Matt Barnes. And, Matt, we got Mike Brown's situation. He's got another year in the deal. He's got two, but the second year is a mutual option. So, essentially, we're coming up on the last year uh, of, of his deal being guaranteed. It's apparent that he's expecting an extension. And there are reports. Obviously, you know, we, no one says this publicly, but it looks like he wants something in the neighborhood of $10 million a year. Kings fans are hoping this gets resolved soon. Could you, from your unique perspective, just speak to – how much he has meant to the Kings in the short time that he's been here? Oh, 10 million a year. That, that, that rang out to me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I wish. Because <laughs> that's what Boone Holder's getting with Phoenix. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. My, my <laughs> money, man. Um, he's been instrumental. I think the inconsistency in, if I can freely speak, in the front office, previous to what Monty's regime has kind of done, you know, I, I think back to DeMarcus Cousins having, if I'm not mistaken, seven coaches in eight years. You, mm-hmm. you, you want consistency. You want some sort of foundation. I think Mike Brown has been able to bring that to the organization. Um, I still think there's times where Mike struggles managing the game at times with player rotations and guys not playing for weeks at a time and then been throwing in the fire and getting a ton of minutes. So as players and, 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 and Kyle, you know, I've spoke on air yeah. about this. We're, we're creatures of habit and you're going to get the best out of players that they know what kind of routine and substitution pattern. And am I in the rotation or out of the rotation? And I can speak as a former player who's been yanked around or consistently in the rotation or out of the rotation. That's very hard to deal with. I mean, people look at the money and you're in the NBA and you got to be ready, but a lot more goes into the preparation of being ready. If you consistently know you're going to get minutes or if you consistently know you're not going to get minutes. And I think that's one thing that I see from an outside looking in as a fan of Mike and a fan of the Kings is kind of just his inconsistency with his rotations and having guys ready when he needs them at at, at their best. You know, Matt, uh, let's continue right there because I agree with you. But then I also look at it as, did Mike trust any of those guys? Is it up to those guys to earn his trust? Or as a coach, should you just, you know what? I'm going to get this guy 10 games, 15, whatever it is. I felt like Mike kept searching and really didn't trust some of his bench yeah. guys. I completely agree. And I think that's the biggest. That'll make or break a player. You know, there's a ton of guys sitting on the bench around the league that just haven't got the trust of the coach or or, or into the – right situation and if you're giving a guy two or three minutes to prove something 
it's it's highly unlikely he's not going to be able to prove anything because he's probably up to the mindset or I, I need to press and make something happen and that's when players make mistakes and, and aren't really themselves so Kyle I think you make a great point really trusting in these guys and I think one guy to, to, to point out is you know Davion Mitchell you know I, I think he's been a guy that's kind of been yo-yoed around and, and some of that is Davion's fault but some of it to me is inconsistent minutes and, and being thrown in, in weird situations and not really getting a chance to work his minutes because the minutes are here and there or sometimes not there at all so Again, each coach might, or excuse me, uh, Kyle has, has different rhyme or reason to how he finds out or how he motivates his bench. And that's kind of just one area that I've seen as a fan and, and someone that knows the game and has had Mike as a coach, just kind of his inconsistency with one trust and two giving guys the opportunity to, I guess, prove themselves out there or, or, or earn more minutes if you're outside of his, let's say, favorite five or six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Matt, we appreciate your time very, very much. Thanks, and uh, we hope to talk to you again soon. No problem, guys. Have All right, man. All right yeah. peace, man. Matty Barnes. Man, our, our cavalcade of guests continues, huh? Yeah. Dude, we've been bumping today. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love Good it. stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he was critical of Mike Brown a little exactly. bit, too. That's, That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, we got to maybe dive deeper into that. Just, uh-huh. You know, we're about to give him $10 million and <laughs> But I, I do think as you we – You never uh, wanted to give him 10 I, I, No, I, I'll give him 10 I do think there's room for Mike to grow just like the players as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So. so we'll talk about that also. Is it championship or bust? Banner or bust mm. for Boston? Next with the Drive yeah. Guys on Sackdown Sports. 